today we got a new battery. And we're gonna have to open it up to figure out who it's from. Because I can't keep track of these things. Oh wow, it's like super packed in there. Well, they sure do know how to use the foam. That's some good packing right there. <laughs> and this battery is from Go Kilowatt Hour. Cool. So it's a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And cool black and yellow case. I like that. I like that color combo. And they've got a battery voltage, battery capacity voltage meter at the top. So it says 13.2 volts, 73%. I wonder if that's just a, you know, I wonder if they're basing that percentage off the battery voltage, or is this actually a shunt? It feels pretty lightweight. It actually feels like, it feels like the weight is skewed to this side over here. So I wonder if the cells are actually over here and there's just uh, foam over here or something. Yeah, it's definitely leaning that direction. Oh, wait a minute. Can we open this? Looks like there's little plugs. Ah, look at that. There's screws. All right, I think we can open this thing up. There we go. And look, it does have a seal. All right, so let's take a look and see what we got here. So they've used, usually they use high density foam inside here, but it appears like they've used kind of like a standard packing foam. Probably not the greatest, because like this side has come loose. This side has kind of come loose as well. And that's going to allow the, the cells to kind of just shift around in here. I think these might be glued. Oh, not really. Yeah, I think this is just going to come right out. Um, yeah, this they should have used high density foam and not this packing foam stuff. Because look, this is just smashed down. That's not going to last really. This is the piece that was right above the BMS and it's just kind of trashed. Uh, vibrating through shipping. Go kilowatt hour. You guys need to upgrade this foam to something better. You need to be using this uh, high density foam that we see in almost all these battery builds. This stuff is very strong and holds up. I do however like the design where you can open the case up. <laughs> that makes it a lot easier to get inside of it. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. We've got, I'm not sure. <laughs> what kind of cells? All right, looks like we've got some blue duct tape on the top. I'm not sure what kind of cells these are. I um, guess we can get into that in just a minute. Our BMS. Oh, I think it says JBD. It does. So we've another battery that has a JBD BMS. So we got JBD dash ZP 4 oh, I'm sorry dash ZP 4 S 16 version 1.2 100 amp so we basically got a 100 amp JBD non smart BMS but it really does look like we have a temperature probe here so I'm thinking maybe we will have low temperature protection And that little meter on the lid, I think it's connected just to the positive and negative. But uh, I slipped up this duct tape looking stuff. And we'll s yeah, so it's soldered here and here, which is the positive and negative. And I think these are going to be some sort of pouch cell. Yeah, because I've got these tabs up here that are welded to these aluminum bus bars. And then there is what looks to be a 
thermal sensor. Let's test that. While we're here, why not? All right, so we are charging with over 40 amps, 41, almost 42 amps. Let's freeze this guy. I think it's gonna work because it's a JBD BMS. They always do, almost. Okay, not yet. There it did. We stopped charging because we froze her up. So it does have low temp protection. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's put this back together. We'll charge it up and do a capacity test. All right, so this thing is all charged up. I just kind of want to show you guys how goofy this, a display like this is. Um, it's fully charged, but like it says, uh, it says 80% because the voltage has settled down and it considers like you know 14.4 or 14.6 to be 100 percent but these batteries they never stay at that high state of voltage um, they usually settle down to what we see here 3 13.5 13.2 something like that <laughs> so our, already this thing thinks it's oh it's only 80 percent when in fact it's 100 the other goofy thing that's going to happen is when we place a load on this, this thing's going to drop down because the voltage is going to sag and it's going to show even lower. And it's just not accurate. I don't know why they even bother with this. It's kind of a gimmick. And you see these things even like on some inverters and some charge controllers. They're just, they're a waste really. I mean, this could be handy just to quickly see the voltage. That's about it. Here, we can hook the charge back up. And look, oh, it's it's going up. It's 82%. It's 84. <laughs> Although it's already 100%. 86. And so this battery got it. It looked like it got up to about 14.2 before the charging shut off. All right, so let's hook this up and do a capacity test. So we've got the shunt hooked up to the battery so we can do a, a capacity test. So let's turn on the inverter. And let's turn on the air conditioner. All right, so we'll just let that go and I'll come back when it completes. All right, so we're down to 38%. I just wanted to come in here and show you real quick how goofy this meter is and how pointless it is. Um, <laughs> it thinks it's at 68%. <laughs> so this, these don't work. All it's really good for is to give you a false reading and confuse you. down to 2% 98.3 amp hours 1267 watt hours are we going to make it we're at 11.9 volts we got about one and a half amp hours left to go I think we're gonna make it There we are, we're down to 1%, so we've got about one amp hour to left to go. We're at 11.8 volts. All right, here we come. 
about to hit full capacity. There it is. 100 amp hours, 1,286 watt hours. And still going. All right, so there's the inverter complaining. Let's go ahead and turn the air conditioner off. I want to turn the I want to turn the inverter off. And we ended up at 101.89, so almost 102 amp hours, 1307 watt hours. All right, and so the last thing we have left to do is weigh this guy. And we are coming in at 22.4 pounds. All right, so my final thoughts on this battery. Well, it passed the capacity test. I do like how you can disassemble it easily. So if you did have to try to repair something, you'd be able to get in there and do it. Uh, what I don't like is the use of this cheap packing foam to assemble the battery go kilowatt hour i think you guys need to use some better foam inside here this stuff is just not going to hold up yeah as we can see there's just two piece two pieces in here just floating around and there's nothing anymore keeping this battery from shifting this direction i'm guessing these used to be over here or something like that but this piece is all smashed. All right, so that's going to be it for the video. Leave your comments, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.